This is the plaintiff, Tashima Little. She says she and the defendant decided to swap cars, and they both signed an agreement stating if there were any problems with the cars detected within the first 30 days, they could change their mind and call the deal off. Of course, the car she got started smoking after a week, and she told the defendant she wanted her car back. Oh, the woman's not only giving her the runaround, she threatened to blow her and her house up. She called the cops, and here they are. She's suing for $5,000, the amount she is most definitely owed. This is the defendant, Crystal Griffin. She says the agreement she had with the plaintiff stated if the cars totally died within the 30 days, they could swap back. The car she gave the plaintiff ran fine. She saw the plaintiff driving it around town. And there's no way she's swapping back the vehicles because a deal is a deal. This woman's caused her so much grief and aggravation, she can't wait for her day in court. She's accused of taking advantage of a friend. The defendant has filed a counter suit for $3,000 for unnecessary stress. All parties, please raise your right hand. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket. These litigants made a deal to swap cars. Plaintiff says within a week, her car started smoking, and when she complained, the defendant threatened to blow her house up. But the defendant says the deal was they would only swap back if one of the cars was totally inoperative. It's the case of swapping is highly overrated. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Tashima welcome. Little, you are suing Crystal Griffin? for $5,000 for pain and suffering and money to buy a new car because according to you, she won't abide by an original agreement you two had. You have a $3,000 lawsuit against her, Ms. Griffin, for a tow you had to pay for that you say is her fault and stress and aggravation. Let me talk to you first, Ms. Little. You two have known each other how long? Not long at all. So you just met? Yes. All right, who, who, who hooked you up with her when you were looking for a new car? I threw a mutual friend. All right, and you had a truck and you wanted a car. No, I had a car and wanted a truck. You had a, a car and you wanted a truck. Correct. And you had a truck and you wanted a car. So this mutual friend is who to you? Uh, her brother, D, that sells cars in Hartford, I've purchased around four cars from him. So that's how I met her, through her brother. Okay, so did Not he get a, a commission friend. for hooking you two up? Yes, he, um, the cars, what I was told was worth $3,000 each. She was looking for a truck, I was looking for a car. He told me to contact her, we could swap cars, and I give him five fifty dollars for swapping it. Did you do that? Yes. So you paid him five fifty. dollars Yeah. All right, and now the two of you write up some paperwork, right? Correct. Whose idea was Mine. the writing? Mine. All right, can I see the paperwork? So she wrote hers and I wrote mine and we swapped. So I have her handwriting, she has mine. Okay, let's see how different. We both agree that if either vehicle breaks down within 30 days, we will get our original car back as long as there is no new body harm to either car. We traded titles and ownership for both cars. After 30 days, it is no trade back. Okay. So within the 30 days, what occurs? Um, after the first week, I haven't drove the car. Um, you the hadn't? Car? What? After the first week, I didn't drive the car. Why wouldn't you drive the car if you only because have 30 days to, to know if you like it? Because it had no license plates on it. Okay. Now, when you two traded cars, what happened with the plates? We didn't have screwdrivers to take them off. So when we exchanged titles and the agreements, the plates still stayed. So I drove the Sebring around with her plates, and she drove the Right, but they're the not thing. assigned to you. No, because no. You, and what did you do? When you got the Sebring, did you register it in your name? Like, around the 9th, I did, yeah. And Within I got the it 30 days? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And when you got the Mountaineer from her, did you register it in your name? No, I didn't. Okay. So you decide you don't want the car because something goes wrong. And when does it go wrong? How long into the 30 days? The third day when I drove the car. And what day. happened? It starts smoking. It needed brakes. Did you ever take it to a mechanic? Yes. I brung May it to... I see the proof from the mechanic? That I don't have the proof, but I can make a phone call to a mechanic. No, this is the trial now. You're the one who chose when to bring it to trial. You got to prove to me. You said the mechanic told you it needed a new head gasket. The mechanic, I didn't bring it to the mechanic. The mechanic came to the, over to the house to look at it. He told me it was overheating. Who is the mechanic? His name is Ty. No, I meant, is this an alley mechanic or a legitimate yeah. mechanic? Yes. A backyard That's a mechanic. multiple choice question. No, it's a backyard mechanic. Like a backyard a mechanic. mechanic. Why didn't you bring him to look at it before you made the exchange? Because you're absolutely right. You have the right to exchange it within 30 days. I just need to know that the car broke down. 
I now, what did she that, tell yeah. you? She texts you and she tells you, I don't want your, your car. Your car is not All right, good. so she never texted me and told me she did not want my truck. She never said that. On the 4th, I text her and I told her, I hope it lasts 30 days because we exchanged it on a second. And on the 4th, I went to economy to get it a, a oil change. And in the comments, it says that the washer fluid leaks, the air filter housing is damaged, and it's held, it's held up by Sebring. metal. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, the Sebring is... Um, so you text her and you tell her what? That the air filter... Wait, no, what is... Do you have the text? Yeah, yeah. I Let like me it. see it. And I have this paper, too. So. I'm in a white. You say to, her, to, to the plaintiff, your washer fluid box is broke. Your air filter box is completely broke. Somebody put wires in it, shaking my head. I hope it lasts 30 days. So by, on May 4th, you're the one who's unhappy. Mm -hmm. She says to you, I never had no problems with either one. I just know there's no washer fluid in there. Everything else on the car is fine. If you don't want it, you can always return it. We will meet up today because I'm going to need them plates. Yeah. And then on the 5th. I pulled over when I just yeah. saw you and you didn't answer. The plaintiff tells you, my phone was dead, but OK, I'm going to meet you over there in a minute. About to come that way soon. But can you talk, because you're a truck girl, tell me about it. When you step on the gas, it feel like the transmission pulling. The car overheat, so I'm not too sure about this truck. You tell her that your truck was fine, you drove it to New York every day, there's nothing wrong with the truck, definitely doesn't overheat, the transmission's not slipping. If you want your car back, I want my 570, plus 123 for brakes and rotors, and 150 for the labor for the oil change, because I, for the oil change, because I feel like y'all really, Raina? I'm trying to play me. Trying to play Type a game. <laughs> I fixed your car, then mine magically messes up, shaking my head. And you tell, you can have your car back, but I want my 570 back, plus the money I put into your car, because you're playing a game. I decided, to, you answer her, I decided to, try, to, to drive the truck for the first time today, and I wasn't feeling it. Maybe your baby's father drove it around. I don't know what he did to it. <laughs> What'd you end up doing? Um, I kept the car and I just, you know, just kept it. And on the eighth, I went to go to work on the eighth, and the Sebring was gone. So I called the cops because it was stolen. On the eighth, you wake up and, and you go out, and the Sebring is gone. gone. So I called the cops. It was stolen. I told them I, I already know who stole it. I did the, <laughs> the the police report. The um apartment complex reviewed the cameras and it showed a tow truck come in to take Did my car. Did you tow the car? Correct. Okay. Why didn't you go to court to try to enforce this contract and prove your case as opposed to and just going in the middle of the night and towing the car? And she wasn't answering no phone calls. So I thought I had I blocked her. to go to her house and get the car back. When she towed the car from you, did she leave the Mountaineer? No. She just if took the If you felt car, that yeah. it was a, a swap situation, and you towed the Sebring. Why didn't you leave the Mountaineer? I didn't do that. No, you didn't. Instead, no. what happens? Okay, you show so up. Okay, so I show up at her house. The Sebring is just parked there. So the cop told me if I find it, don't move it to call the cops. All right, so I call the cops. You know, and in the meantime, we're arguing, whatever. I call the cops. She tells the cops um, that she's not giving me back my Mountaineer, that she illegally... Um, forged her grandma's signature on the Sebring, so technically it's not my car, and her grandma wants it back. So the, the cops were all confused and said it's a civil matter, and they did that. What? Okay, uh, good idea, bad idea to swap cars with a friend. Bad idea. Why? You never really know what could happen. You have to make sure you're insured and they're insured to drive your car. But it's not about insurance. It's about swapping cars where I now own your car, you now own my car. I think if you gave them a consent, then if anything happens, then they could tell you that, oh, you gave me consent to take your car away. So what's their excuse? Okay, but you are friends. So what about the friendship swapping cars and whatnot? I think it's a bad idea because there could be something wrong with the car yeah. that they don't know about. No kidding, going inside the courtroom. I never told her I wasn't getting her car back when her when the cops came. They came for a whole total situation, um, harassing, making threats. They were. Yes, her she and her baby and father. Okay. By the time I got to, you actually told the police that you saw a gun. Yes, I did. 
Did you see a gun? Yes, on his waist. And I took, because I read came, the police reports, uh -huh. and I see that the police frisked him immediately, and there was no gun. Right. They look at the text messages. They see the mutual agreements. They said they couldn't, uh, they, they couldn't do nothing because it was a civil case. They weren't going to do anything about the stolen car because Correct. it wasn't really stolen. It was a an over-eager repossession by someone who thought she had the right to do that, but doesn't leave the Mountaineer. Okay. Correct. Uh, right. Yeah, no, why? You should keep everything. Um, <laughs> but, so the police tell you you signed over the title, so she gets to take the Sebring, right? Correct. Okay. So you are counterclaiming against her for $125 for the tow. Why? If Be it's unregistered, that's something you failed to do. Why is it that she has to reimburse you for the tow? Because she stole the car. It was parked at yes, my house. Yes, and there's a beauty to that, okay? <laughs> but you had a key on you. You were ready. If you, if you had I, had legitimate plates on it and it was registered and everything else, you could have just driven it away. Oh, no, it, it so was the question stuff. becomes, why did you have to incur the 125? Is it something she did or is it something you no, did? No, it wasn't registered. Yeah, yeah, that's on you. That's not on her. Why would she have to reimburse you for that? And then the rest of it for stress and aggravation. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, because for once, I feel like I'm being sued $5,000 for a car that Kelly Brew Book price, you know, I should have did this before I got it, but it's worth $500. It's a rebuilt, it's a rebuilt Savage title. And the car was totaled. The Sebring was totaled. Why'd you want it so bad? Why didn't you want your Mountaineer back then? I do, but I was already being sued. So there's nothing I can do. Like, I didn't find out all of the information until after I was being sued, I started investigating on the, the car, honestly. Wait, wait, so. so now you want to return the Sebring and get back the Mountaineer? No, I don't. I don't really care what happens. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying is that she's, like, I don't... What is it you want? You want to keep the Sebring? I have to, yeah. Why? Because you've already been through fixing it and yeah. registering it, and now it's registered. Yeah, and it's like now I really don't know what's going on with that truck, so I don't want to get it back, and it's magically yeah. new stuff, so. All right. Um, Same thing going on the truck from when it was sitting. Right, and all I need, my needs are so simple, all I needed was for you to prove that it broke down. That's it, okay. because that's your contract. You have an absolute right to switch back if it breaks down. Mm -hmm. All you had to do was get an estimate on a repair and an acknowledgement by a legitimate repair place saying, or even an alley mechanic saying, but you got nothing. They say y'all could call if you want to make a phone I'm call. I'm not making a call for you. You're lazy. Not a problem. Okay. No. Right. I make a call for sometimes if I feel that the demands of justice require it. But if I think that I'm dealing with someone takes a line to their own hands like you did, who tells the police there's a gun to get them there, and there was no gun, who then looks at me and says, you can call if you want, if not, all right, okay? No, I don't feel that warm and fuzzy glow that possesses me to pick up a phone and call on your behalf to get evidence that you didn't bring to court. I'm not feeling it. Not a problem. Okay, so as far as I am concerned, the plaintiff has failed to prove the condition precedent to getting the car switched back by not being able to prove that the car broke down. The 30 days has passed, and each of you own your own respective cars on your counterclaim against her for the tow, because of the reasons I've already explained to you, it's on you that you couldn't drive that car back, that you were driving a car that shouldn't be driven. If you had had it appropriately registered and whatever else, and I think, then they would have let you use your can take it back, and you wouldn't even have had a tow. Mm -hmm. So the real reason you had a tow was on you, so she doesn't have to pay you back for that. And stress and aggravation, that one's got me out there, because I'm all kinds of stressed and I'm aggravated myself. <laughs> I'm stressed and aggravated yeah. because she's, oh, it's a savage title. Like, the car is breaking down slowly, Yeah, that's all so. the kind of stuff. When you buy a car yeah, yeah. as is, you buy it as yeah. is. When you buy a used car, it is as is, all right? And so those are all the things everybody's so industrious after the fact. You're supposed to be industrious before the fact. So on your lawsuit against her, zero. And on her lawsuit against you for the tow and stress, also zero. Everybody go home with their respective cars and trucks. Well, no one wins in this uh, issue of two competing lawsuits. Uh, Ms. Little, you needed some evidence and you didn't have it. If I knew that, I would have had every one of my papers. Yeah, okay. Sorry about that. You learn okay. anything about swapping cars like this? Yes. Think you'd do it again? No. Yeah, I don't blame <laughs> you. I don't blame you at all. All right, thank you very much. Yeah.
Okay, Ms. Griffin, you feel the same way? Would you ever swap again? Not with her, no. Well, okay. Anyway, you got to live with the with your car now. Oh, yeah, I'm fine. You are? I'm fine, yeah. You weren't happy with it a couple minutes ago. It's okay. It is what it is. It is what it is. Okay, good luck. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, by the way, uh, Doug, it sounds like the plaintiff filed a false police report, which is a crime, so she is very lucky. And that will do it for this case, litigants, for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now.